everyone. Today is the ninth lecture for accountancy. This is Payal Ma'am, your accountancy teacher. And today we are going to start a new chapter that is chapter 2 from part 1 of your textbook which is dual effect of transactions and types of accounts. We have finished chapter 1 which is accounting and its terminology. Yes, we have had several lectures for the same. I mean for completion of that chapter. Yes, the chapter was completely theoretical. Yes, and as I said, the most important chapter, just because it was the first chapter of accountancy. The new subject, new field, I mean the new field of commerce that you have chosen after 10th and the most important subject of all accountancy yes of which chapter 1 is already completed which was completely based on theory yes today we are going to start second chapter from part 1 which is dual effect of transactions and types of accounts the chapter is really interesting no doubt this is again theory but comparatively it is interesting compared to chapter 1. Chapter 1 me thodi bahut dikkat ye thi ke sabse pehle wo bahut hi naya chapter tha. Till date you were not aware of anything that was mentioned in that chapter. Another thing is it was the very first chapter for the new subject. Yes. So, second chapter is comparatively interesting to that and for that you need to be already prepared with chapter 1. Yeah, make sure that you have studied and you have watched the lectures of chapter 1. Yes, because chapter 2 is related with chapter 1. Then chapter 3 or 4 whatever you say the following chapters further in your textbook are all related if you aren't aware about chapter 1 it is next to impossible for you to understand anything in chapter 2 and so on yes if you don't know the basics how is it possible for you to move ahead yes so please Please go through the chapters, I mean the lectures of chapter 1 thoroughly. Try to understand, read in your textbook, google it a bit and expand your knowledge. Yes, please do this. Yeah. So, finally let us talk about chapter 2. This is the ninth lecture for uh, this subject and the very first lecture for chapter 2. I repeat this is the first lecture for chapter 2. The previous lectures were for chapter 1. Yes. So in an order lecture 9 and first lecture for chapter 2. Okay. So first of all let us begin understanding the meaning of the heading of the chapter. It says dual effect of transactions. First of all, dual is two. Effect of transactions. What is a transaction? We have understood this in chapter one. Yes. Try to recall. What is a transaction? Yes. Transaction is an exchange of goods and services between two persons of business or else exchange of goods and services in terms of money. Yes, simply speaking it is exchange of goods and services in terms of 
money. Yes, this definition we have understood in chapter 1 and is also given in your textbook on the very first page. Page number 24, I am having a textbook here on my desk and I hope you are also having a textbook in your hands while you watch this lecture. Yes, you should keep your books open. Yes. Uh, like uh, we are creating an atmosphere like a class. You have a teacher as me and I have a textbook, there is a blackboard and etc. And you are watching this lecture with your textbook. Yes, and your 100% concentration should be here. Yes, so we were talking about a transaction. So you have a definition again here. Business transaction means the exchange of products, services of business for cash or on credit between two or more than two persons. Simply speaking, if you will purchase something, you will give something in return and that something that you give in return is always money. Money is the common medium of exchange, isn't it? Yes. So, the very first step of accounting, the very first step is the creation of transaction and its identification. So, creation and identification. of transaction. Now you know very well what is a transaction. Yes, transaction is created and is identified. Yes, creation of transaction is the transaction taking place. Yes, and its identification is what? That what type of transaction it is. Yes, and the very first step in accounting is the creation and identification of transaction. Alright, okay. So, firstly the transaction should take place, which is creation. Then it should be identified. Yes, that which type of transaction it is. Economic, cash, I mean in economic transaction further cash, credit, yes, this is what we are going to learn in this chapter. That what are the types of transactions, what are the effects of transactions, yes, as the heading itself says dual effect of transactions, right. So this is what we are going to learn in this chapter, yes, so first of all, transaction it should be a business transaction a transaction related to the business then it should be economic transaction yes firstly it should be a business transaction the transaction related to the business Secondly, it should be economic transaction. Thirdly, it should be measured in terms of money. That is a monetary transaction. The transaction which can be measured in terms of money is called economic transaction. Yes, we are talking about that what is done in accounting. The very first thing is the record of transactions. What type of transactions? The first quality should be that it should be a business transaction. A transaction related to your business. Yes, only those transactions you are going to record. Then the transaction should be economic. The one which can be measured in terms of money. 
it should have some monetary value yes because business is an activity carried out for making profit and economic benefit yes okay then the transaction can be cash transaction or it can be credit transaction it can be internal transaction or it can be external transaction yes so this is all about the types of transactions yes fine so moving ahead we have a topic in your textbook which says the classification of business transaction which simply means what are the types of transactions yes these were just the characteristics i can say yes now let us study the types of transactions an important topic okay the topic that we are going to start is types of transactions there are mainly two types economic transactions non economic transactions yes the one measurable in terms of money the one which cannot be measured in terms of money you will record which only the one which can be measured in terms of money which is economic transaction all right further economic transaction is classified as cash transaction credit transaction and other transactions okay it can be also classified as internal and external transactions okay i repeat we are understanding the topic about types of transactions for that you should be aware what actually a transaction is which is taught in chapter 1 yes you should be aware of this now its types economic non economic measured in terms of money not measured in terms of money which type of transactions are recorded the one which can be measured in terms of money and should be a business transaction economic transactions are further classified as cash transaction credit transaction other transactions and also internal and external transactions yes so now we know the meaning of economic transaction but we are yet to study the types of economic transactions in detail yes so we'll start with the same one by one yes okay so please uh, pay attention in your textbook on page number 25 all of you you have a textbook i mean i hope you have your textbook with you okay so there is a chart that i have prepared on the board uh about business transaction and economic transaction non economic transaction cash transaction credit transaction and other transactions internal transactions external transactions then you have non economic transaction which is not recorded in the books of accounts yes now we are going in detail about the study of cash transaction yes okay so 
cash transactions. In this type of transaction, money is paid or received for the exchange of goods or services. We have understood what does a cash transaction mean in the previous lectures. When the payment is made on the spot or is received on the spot is a cash transaction. And when the payment is delayed to a future date, it is credit transaction, of course. Yes, we have learned this in chapter 1 in detail. Yes, so now talking about cash transaction, you know its meaning. But now there are again types of cash transactions that we are going to understand. We have understood about economic transactions. Now we are going to understand about cash transactions. That how many types of cash transactions take place in the business. Yes? Okay. Cash transaction. First of all, in which the receipt or payment of money is involved on the spot. Yes. Okay. Further, there is a cash transaction for asset. The very first type. We are understanding cash transactions. And in that, it is cash transaction of asset. Asset. What is an asset? You know this. This has been taught in chapter 1. Yes. Asset is an intangible or intangible, sorry, is a tangible or intangible item in the ownership of business having some realizable value. Yes, it can be furniture, machine, data, cash, stock of goods, etc., etc. These are all assets. Yes. And now we are understanding the cash transaction of an asset. Yes. Let us consider the example that is given in your textbook. It says furniture worth rupees 10,000 is purchased for business. Furniture. Worth rupees. 10,000 is purchased for business. This is your example. Yes, furniture worth rupees 10,000 is purchased for business. This is an example of cash transaction of an asset. How? First of all, furniture is an asset. Which type of asset? Non-current fixed asset. Tangible. Yes. An asset having a life of more than one year is a non-current asset. Yes. In which furniture is included and is also a tangible asset. Furniture can be seen, it can even be touched. Yes? So, furniture worth rupees 10,000 is purchased for business. Asset. Asset is purchased for business for how much rupees? For rupees 10,000. Yes? Furniture worth rupees 10,000 is purchased for business. You have purchased an asset. You means consider yourself that you have purchased a furniture for your business. Man lijiye, aap hi owner hai. Hmm? Agar main uh, ye saam solve kar rahi hu, toh I'll consider myself as an owner. Yes? So, Say for example, you have purchased furniture of rupees 10,000. 
So furniture comes to you. What goes out? Cash. You have paid 10,000 rupees for purchasing a furniture. And what is furniture? Is an asset. So, and you have given cash in exchange of an asset. Yes, so this becomes a cash transaction of an asset. Why? Because you have paid 10,000 rupees cash for purchase of furniture of rupees 10,000. Clear? I hope it is clear. Then, Cash transaction of goods is the second type. We are understanding about cash transactions. which we have understood the cash transaction of an asset. Now we are going to understand about cash transaction of goods. So cash transaction of goods. Goods. Goods are the items in which a trader is trading. Yes, this is also taught to you in chapter one again. Yes? Alright. So goods. Anything? I mean uh, an item in which a trader is trading. Yes? So goods is that. And the cash transactions related to goods. We are going to understand. Let us consider a simple example. Very simple example. Purchased goods of rupees five thousand for cash or sold goods of rupees five thousand for cash. Okay, understand. You have purchased goods of rupees 5000. You will get goods. You will pay money on the spot. Cash transaction of goods. Then you have sold goods. That means you have given goods and you have received 5000. Again, cash transaction of goods. Here you have purchased and here you have sold. Alright? Fine. So this was again simple to understand. The third category is the cash transaction of service. Yes? I hope you were able to understand this and uh, you can also revise this concept which is given in your textbook. Examples are given. You will watch this lecture and then you will, if you will take your textbook, and if you will try to understand, definitely it will be clear. Alright? Okay. Fine. So now cash transaction of service. Yes. Okay. Service. While understanding the definition of a transaction, it says it is an exchange of goods or service between two or more persons or anything, right? In terms of money, yes. So now talking about a service, yeah. Consider an example that I am giving. You are the owner of a business. Okay, listen to me with extreme care and just imagine whatever I ask you to, as I mean I ask you for, okay. Say for example, you are 
and owner of the business. Okay. Now you have several people working under you. Yes. They are working for you. Yes. For your business. So what does happen here? You will give them salary of course. Yes. Nobody is going to work for free. Yeah. So in return you will give them salary. Yes. Every month. Yeah. So this is the transaction of service. Cash transaction of service. An employee will give you service and in return you will give him or her the amount of salary in cash. Yes. Now you may ask ma'am what if I am giving a check? That is also a payment. Yes. It is considered a payment at the end. If you are giving cash, if you are giving check. Both of them, sorry, both of them mean what? They mean the payment. Yes. So if you are having any such sort of questions in your mind, then I have already clarified them. Okay. So this is a cash transaction of service. Yes. Example is given in your uh, textbook the same that I have given salary given to an employee. We will consider this in writing. Salary rupees 12,000 given to employee. Employee is giving service. You are giving him salary rupees 12,000. You are getting service. You are giving money. Yes. So cash transaction of service. Yes. Fine. Then there are several other examples given in your textbook. You can study them and you can understand them uh, on your own. Then the fourth and last type of cash transaction is a transaction of receivables and payables. Yes, the one that we are going to understand. This point is given on the next page. Cash transaction of receivables and payables. Let us understand. Now, first of all, receivables means the amount that you have to receive. And payables means the amount that you have to pay. This is the liability actually. Yes. So, in your textbook page number 26, the head point given for, uh, I mean the sub point given for the study of cash transactions, transaction for receivable and payables. It says any amount which is outstanding to pay for an asset, goods or service acquired in the past is known as payables. Say for example, you have purchased something on credit in past years and you are going to pay for the same at this moment in this year I mean to say right so that will become the cash transaction of payables say for example you have purchased an asset in past for which the amount is yet to be paid and you will pay that amount right now yes you will pay an amount for the asset purchased in past and the amount you will pay right now will be considered as cash transaction of payables. Yes, then the cash transaction for receivables can be understood. Uh, the example is given here. Uh, the outstanding payment of rupees 3000 for goods purchased from Ramila is made. This is again the 
cash transaction of payables that means uh, they say that you had purchased several goods from ramila in past for which sorry for which the payment is made right now again the cash transaction of payables cash transaction of receivables is what say for example there is a person who has purchased goods from you yes you are the owner you have sold goods to that person i mean that person has purchased goods from you and the person did not pay the money due that time yes so that person the other party i mean to say has purchased goods in past and that person is going to pay right now that is a cash transaction of receivables all right so these were all the types of cash transactions yes now we are going to understand about credit transactions yes and uh, anything i mean everything that we have understood about cash transactions is given in your textbook very clearly you should read it in detail for a better understanding and uh, right now we are going to start with the second type of economic transaction which is credit transaction you know very well what a credit transaction means what is a cash transaction whenever the amount is received on the spot or the amount is paid on the spot yes that means there is a cash receipt or cash payment that moment itself yes but whenever yes whenever the amount is delayed the payment or receipt of money is delayed to some future date the transaction is termed as a credit transaction yes which results in the debtor creditor relationship credit transaction results into the creation of debtor creditor relationship yes say for example you have purchased goods of rupees 10000 from payal for on credit yes you have purchased goods of rupees 10000 from payal on credit yes there is no mention regarding the payment of amount to payal anywhere you have received goods of rupees 10000 and you haven't paid it is not mentioned anywhere here that you have purchased goods of rupees 10000 from payal on cash no it is on credit yes so who is payal for you she is a creditor a liability yes payal is your creditor and you are a debtor for payal yes because you did not pay rupees 10000 right now you have purchased goods from payal on credit that means you will pay those 10000 rupees later yes so this is what a credit transaction means credit transaction also is an economic transaction in which the payment is just delayed to some future date instead of receiving it at the moment itself or say on the 
spot. Yes, this is the difference between cash transaction and a credit transaction. This does not mean that credit transaction is not economic transaction. It is economic transaction because money is involved. The economic value of this transaction is rupees 10,000 which is not paid right now but will be paid in future. Yes? Alright. Then let us read the explanation that is given. In this type of transaction, money is not paid immediately for purchase or sales of asset, goods and service. Anything that is, I mean, a transaction, I mean a transaction for which the amount is not paid immediately or is not received immediately, yes, becomes a credit transaction. That amount is delayed to some future date. Yes? Okay. So, this is all about credit transaction. Then, finally, talking about other transactions. Yes? While understanding the chart of types of transactions, we have classified it as economic transaction and non-economic transaction. Economic transaction, cash transaction, credit transaction and other transactions. We have understood about cash transaction. What does a cash transaction mean? Yes, in which the receipt or payment is involved on the spot. Yes, cash transaction of goods, cash transaction of an asset, cash transaction of service, yes, and cash transaction of receivables and payables, yes. Then we have understood about credit transactions. What does a credit transaction mean? The payment and receipt for purchase or sale of an asset, goods or services is delayed to a future date. That means it will be received or it will be paid later in future. Yes? Okay. Then, yes, and uh, an important point about credit transaction is that it results in debtor-creditor relationship. Yes? Here, as I said, Payal, the party from which, from whom you have purchased goods, Yes, and you are supposed to pay rupees 10,000 to Payal in future within the limit of credit period allowed from Payal. Yes, becomes a credit transaction. Yeah, okay. So now, talking about the other transactions. What are the other transactions? Yes, let us understand that. You should please pay attention to the lectures and the explanation and you should also revise the topics in your textbook. Yes, the topics that are explained here, the one which are taught here. Yes, uh, fine, then let us talk about other transactions. Other transactions in the category of an economic transaction, which are they? Now in business, there are many type of transactions, yes, that uh, you will purchase something on cash, on credit, you will sell something on cash or on credit, yes, then uh, you will purchase an asset, you will pay salary. You, uh, the, the owner will bring capital, the owner will withdraw some amount. So, the transaction related to drawings, etc., etc. Yes, there is purchase, there is purchase return, sales, sales with ample of transactions. 
yes you are taking loan from someone you will pay interest on loan so transactions for everything yes but now there are several transactions which does not appear under the category of cash transactions or credit transactions yes okay so what about them those transactions come under the category of other transactions the example can be goods destroyed by fire goods given for donation yes these are the types of other transactions these are not in the category of the above two that is cash transaction and a credit transaction yes so they are categorized under the category of other transactions under the heading of economic transactions yes so there are several other examples even let us check yes on page number 26 the topic other transaction the third point other transaction the third type i mean under the category of economic transactions the transaction that do not fall in the above mentioned two types are other special transactions as i have explained this can be goods destroyed in an accident theft of goods i mean uh, that is the robbery goods given for donation goods given for advertisement and turned defective or useless yes so this this type of transactions do not involve purchase sale activity if goods are stolen away what could you do about it yes this does happen yeah or else you have given goods for donation the goods have been destroyed by fire etc etc so these type of transactions they appear under the category of other transactions yes so here we end our session for today we have understood about the types of transactions in that economic transactions in detail which is cash transaction credit transaction and other transactions this topics are also given in your textbook in detail with examples yes also the explanation has been given in this lecture with proper examples and a complete understanding yes but still for the purpose of revision you should read it in detail in the textbook and uh, also you should be sure that you have gone through the lectures of chapter 1 before you proceed with chapter 2 it is really important that you should have a base of chapter 1 for a better understanding or say complete understanding of chapter 2 yes so chapter 2 that we have started today the dual effect of transactions and types of accounts as i said the chapter is really interesting if you study carefully yes so we'll end the session here today and we'll continue with the same chapter in the next lecture yes till then please stay home study well and do not move out unnecessarily we'll see you all soon in the next lecture